Rebuilding a Burnout Vulcan model steam toy part 22. Lightly machining the top cap, applying the easy flow number 2 flux and carefully silver soldering the parts together, using plenty of heat as this is not soft soldering. As I mentioned in the previous episode, this is the first boiler that I have ever made, so please bear with me on the extreme construction methods. I've put the flue tube and the top cap into the Boxford lathe and I'm turning the top cap because I thought that the top part of it was a bit too thick. Normally I do these voiceovers in the morning but this morning I got out of bed earlier than usual because I had to be in Leeds for some more radiotherapy at 9 o'clock. This is the second radiotherapy session I've had and it's now 2.13 and I'm sat in the editing room editing the video. This is a very important video for anyone who hasn't built a boiler before, including me. The job started by silver soldering the water gauge bushes in place from the inside. Then I soldered them from the outside to tidy up the joint and make it look like it was silver soldered. Normally when I apply silver solder flux to a part, it's usually a small piece of pipe. And I used the silver solder stick for this, but I realised for boiler making, I need to improve upon this method and use a brush. But as I've just said, and I said in the previous episode, this is my first attempt. I'm sure things will get easier the more boilers that I make, and I do intend to make a few boilers, just to show you how it's done. I'm starting off with a really simple small boiler. The construction of this boiler is so over the top, it really would hold a lot of pressure. I'm tapping the top cap into position, making sure that the two blanking plugs are in the right place relative to the position of the water gauge. The next thing to do is to bend a ring of silver solder, and to do this I'm using the piece of gun metal which is the firebox crown, because it's the same size as the top cap. It's quite tricky to estimate how long the piece of silver solder needs to be, but this is close enough. The entire area, including the groove in the top cap, has been coated in silver solder flux. So all I need to do now is heat up the part until the solder melts and runs into the gap. This took a while so the video is running at a higher speed just to get through it in a reasonable time. The burner head that I'm using is not too big for the job, but it's not too small either. It's perfect for a boiler of this size and it allows me to control the heat. I don't want to cremate the part, I want to make it hot enough to melt the silver solder so that it flows into the joint. Even though the outside of the boiler looks horrible, the inside was very clean when I assembled the parts. After leaving the boiler to cool for a while, I didn't put it in the acid bath, that would be a useless waste of time. What I'm doing here is using a flapper wheel to clean up the inside area where the firebox crown is going to fit. As well as cleaning the inside of the shell, I'm also cleaning the outside of the centre flue. Everything needs to be scrupulously clean. Before starting work on this boiler, I did give it a great deal of thought. And as you can see, some of the silver solder has run down from the top cap and is starting to creep down the side of the boiler. This is great because it shows full penetration of the silver solder. I decided to machine the flue tube from a solid piece of phosphor bronze bar. Once the firebox crown is soldered in place, I'll be able to put this boiler back in the lathe to turn away the excess silver solder around the joint. Maybe I'm being a bit too picky, but I did think this was a good idea. And this is also a good idea, I think. The two holes in the top cap allow me to put a screwdriver through to make it possible to level up the firebox crown if it goes in crooked first through one hole and then the other. And in practice this really did work and I got the part very level. After thoroughly cleaning up the inside of the barrel and the outside of the flue tube, I applied some silver solder flux. Once again, it's easy flow number two. And then I also made a ring of silver solder to go down the inside and fit in the groove around the edge of the firebox crown. All I need to do now is heat up the part like I did with the top cap and with a bit of luck the silver solder should melt and run down into the recess and because this part is not 100% tight it should also find its way through to the other side 
full penetration is what is required. As I said earlier, this boiler is a bit over the top for the size of it, but that is not the point. It should pass the hydraulic test with ease and become a very safe boiler to make steam for this small Burnack Vulcan engine. You have to get a feel for the amount of heat that you apply. If you do use too much heat, you stand a good chance of damaging the parts that you're silver soldering. And by the way, the firebox crown and the top cap are both made from gun metal, not brass. Brass would be entirely unsuitable for this job. That's it, I think it should be fine, and here's a shot of the part cooling. A miniature steam boiler is very different to silver soldering a piece of pipe, so by the time I put it in the acid bath, it was cool. If I was to shock the boiler by throwing it into a bucket of cold water, it could crack the joints. With the boiler safely in the acid bath, I can now turn my attention to removing the black paint from the water gauge fittings. And to do this, I'm pouring some cellulose thinners into a rattle can cap. First the bottom fitting goes in, followed by the top one. All I need to do is leave these in the cellulose thinners for a while and the paint will drop off them. And indeed, that's what's happened. After about an hour, I thought I'd have a look how the boiler was going on in the acid, and as I pulled it out, it was starting to look cleaner, but it needs to be cleaner than that, so I put it back in. That is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.